Over the years, I've done several projects at the Coronet Theatre, and I'm delighted to have this connection between the Coronet in London and the Centre for the Less Good Idea in Johannesburg, and for this project to be part of the Inside Out series of digital performances to cement this connection of Johannesburg, London, and of course to viewers in many other cities as well. The Centre for the Less Good Idea is an art centre in downtown Johannesburg that was started four years ago. It's a centre for different musicians, artists, actors, dancers, videographers, writers, to come together and find the energy that comes from unexpected collaborations. The idea is that you'd start with the first impulse, the first idea, the good idea, but in the process of following this idea of rehearsals, of improvisations, of putting the musician together with the poet, uh, new things emerge from the periphery, from the periphery of the process, from the activity of making. These are the less good ideas, the ideas at the edge, but they come into the center and start shaping and forming and changing the ideas of the good idea. In practical terms, it means we have two seasons a year in which different curators are invited to invite a range of performers, writers, artists, makers, theatre makers, to make a season of four or five days of duration to show primarily the citizens of Johannesburg. So far we have had seven seasons, and our seventh season, which was scheduled for this last April, was of course impossible to produce in its form where it should be of a live audience in our different spaces downtown Johannesburg. Instead what we did was halfway through the rehearsal process when we realized we would be in lockdown and uh, public performances, live performances would be impossible, we filmed several of the different projects of the approximately 40 projects that were being made for the season and filmed them and put them online. So some of them are a work in progress, some were more finished than others and we had an online festival over seven evenings of streaming and of having online premieres of these pieces. This particular season, of which was curated by myself, William Kentridge, and Pala Okaditse Pala, who is the animateur, the director of the Centre for the Less Good Idea, took as its principle working with found text, existing texts, seeing how a novel, a poem, a chapter of a novel could be transformed or put onto the stage. We used techniques of a traditional stage with musicians and performers, but we also developed a program using Pepper's Ghosts. The principle of the Pepper's Ghost is to have a half-silvered mirror. When there is a light on in front of the mirror, you can see its reflection on the mirror. And this is either a person, a human, or else a projection which we can show on the floor, which is reflected into the mirror. If there is light behind the mirror, then what one sees is the image behind the mirror as well. So we work with a combination of live performance and projected performance or live performance in front of the mirror. And one of them, a project I directed, is a extract or a version of a Mayakovsky early play called Mayakovsky, A Tragedy, written in 1913. For us it's performed by one actor and it uses a mixture of a live performer and different shadows and other figures that are presented on the same plane. What obviously you don't see in the film is that the physical presence of the actor and the projection seem to occupy the same area rather than the one being in front and the other behind. But the possibilities of working with this medium, of changing scale, of finding an anti-naturalist language was one that has excited many of the participants in this seventh season and we hope that this version of it will make sense to viewers seeing it only on a digital platform.
Ladies and gentlemen, patch up your souls so your emptiness can't leak out. I don't know whether a gob of spit is an insult or not. I am dry as stone image. They've milked me like a cow. But ladies and gentlemen, if you wish, a remarkable poet will dance for you right here and now. I will reveal to you with words as simple as bellowing our new souls cunning like the axe of street lights. I will touch your heads with my fingers and you will grow lips for enormous kisses and tongues native to all the peoples. I may well be the last poet there is. Have you noticed dangling above the pebbled paths the striped face of boredom hanged? <laughs> Can you understand why I, quite calmly, through the hailstorm of jeers, carry my soul on a platter to be dined on by future years? the heavens, a god gone mad is looking down on the hollowing human horde, his hand tattered in his beard, eaten thin by the dust of the roads. He is God, yet he talks of cruel retributions, but the midriff in your poor shabby souls is one thing. Get rid of him. Go stroke cats, stroke cats that are black and scrawny. Only in cats whose fur is shot through with blackness will you catch the flashes of electric eyes. The entire catch of those flashes, the big catch, will pour into wires. Those muscles of tractions, street cars will start off in a rush. The flame of wigs will glow in the night like triumphant banners. People will travel on rail, always trailed by cats, more cats, lots of big cats. We will feel the sun in the gowns of our sweet hearts. We will adorn them with glitter the brooches of the stars. Leave your apartment. Go stroke cats. Stroke cats that are black and scrawny.
By the way, I did find her once that soul. She came out wearing a blue dressing gown and said, Sit down. I've been waiting a long time for you. Wouldn't you like a glass of tea? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, wait, sir, please tell me quickly, do you and others want to ban mothers? Sir, please, the mind of a man is keen, but before the world's mysteries, it coils, yet you are going to start a blaze with the treasures of knowledge and books. I've thought up a machine for slicing him. I am quite clever, if you please. I know a man who's been working for 25 years on a trap for catching fleas. I've got a wife who will soon give birth to a son or a daughter, yet you talk of monstrous evils, intelligent people. Why? It's almost uncivil. Lay of it. If you'd gone without food like I've gone without food, you would chew on the distant expenses of the East and West. If you've loved like I have loved, you would murder love. Stop! On the street where everyone was like a burden, the same face. Old lady time just now gave birth to a huge revolt wearing a grimace. What a laugh. Old timers went numb when they saw the snouts of the years came crawling out. From a shop of a tailor who had fainted, trousers escaped and went along alone. Without human buttocks, out of the bedroom, a drunken commode, its black mouth agape, came stumbling. Cosette wept, afraid of tumbling from the sign reading, Rob a Maud. It's no use to me. Here, 
That's all right. It is white. Silk made of filaments from eyes transmitting grief. What's that to you? My son is dying. No trouble. Here is another tear. You could put it in your shoe and it would make a fine buckle. A man who was all big and dirty received two kisses as a gift. He was an awkward fellow and did not know what to do with them. But the man was cold. He chose one of the kisses bigger than the other and put it on his galoshes. But the winter was bitter, cold, and nipped at his fingers. Oh, bother, said the man. I'll throw these useless kisses away. And he did. When he looked around, the kiss was lying there on the sofa, huge, fat, and tall. First laughing, and then in a rage. Good Lord! The man said, beginning to cry. I've never believed that I'd get so tired. I'll just have to hang myself. That's all. While he hanged there, vile, pitiful, in their bedrooms, women, factories without smoke or smokestacks, manufactured pieces by millions, all kinds, both big and little, with the meaty livers that smack. I wrote all this for you, poor drudges. It's too bad I had no bosom out, had fed all of you like the little old nanny. But right now, I'm a bit dried up and a bit touched in the head. And on the other hand, who would have given his thoughts such inhumane latitude? Who and where? It was I who struck the finger into the sky. I had proved that he is a thief. Sometimes it seems to me like I am a Dutch rooster 
or a Scovian king. But at other times, what pleases me more than anything else is my own name. Vladimir Mayakovsky. <laughs>